It's a beautiful morning in 2016. You roll out of bed, grab your phone, and immediately open the Instagram app to see all the notifications from yesterday's hard work. And today, we're doing the exact same thing. We're getting ready to post our photo of the day. We have 48 hashtags loaded up, ready to go. We have all of our favorite repost accounts loaded and ready to tag in the photo. We have our engagement group on deck. Everyone's ready to post at the exact same time and comment and like on each other's pictures. And most importantly, we have 200 random people we're going to follow and make sure that we unfollow 48 hours later. Sadly, none of that works anymore. We're now in 2022 and life is very different on Instagram and it's a completely different place. And myself being an internet creator who talks about social media, a lot of the things that I've said in the past, as well as other creators have said in the past, simply are no longer relevant. So today we are going over a bunch of outdated Instagram strategies that you need to be aware of and make sure that you're not wasting your time doing going forward so you can get the most growth out of your social media as possible and you're not just spinning your wheels doing stuff that frankly is a waste of time like I said so if you enjoy the video hit the thumbs up button for me and shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video it's a pretty long list so I'm not gonna spend too much time on any single one of these the first thing that you don't need to do anymore is post a million hashtags to your photos I know this was cool back in the day and I know it worked really well back in the day because hashtags were used as more of like an algorithmic interest drivers. Basically, the algorithm assumed that certain tags made content interesting to a certain group of people and they were more likely to show your post on the explore page and things like that. Now, hashtags don't really work the same. Hashtags are more of a search tool on Instagram. So if you're going to use hashtags, maybe use two, three, maybe four and make sure they're relevant to the post. For example, I use hashtags a lot of times to find restaurants, find events. So what I'll do is I'll search like hashtag Atlanta or I'll search hashtag Piedmont Park. I'm very specific with what I search and that is how you want to think about the hashtags you're using. Think about what are people looking for and how does my post relate to what someone might be trying to find. Be more specific and targeting with your hashtags. The second thing that no longer works is these repost pages. Now, I don't know every single corner of the internet. I'm not exactly sure. You know, there might be some accounts out there that still repost photos and you get a lot of engagement for them. But in my experience, this was really trendy in 2000. 2015, 16, and 17, you had these pages that would just repost a ton of content and they would get a lot of engagement because Instagram was primarily photo based at the time. But now because of all the new features on Instagram, these repost pages, they just don't really have the same reach or engagement anymore. And I know this from personal experience. Recently, I had a photo posted to an account that had 2 million followers. It got, I think, 6,000 likes on my page. It got 7,000 likes. I only have 140,000 or something like that. So for them to have 2 million people and get engagement like that, and then my account only got maybe 25, 30 new followers from that post, it's just not worth your time to sit there and tag all these different accounts, hoping that they'll share your work. You're going to have much more success tagging accounts that are actually relevant to the post. So let's say you post a pair of sneakers that are by a certain brand or something like that, tag the brand and then they might repost it on their page. This is just a strategy that makes a whole lot more sense and it also helps you build some rapport with your audience. You know, if you share a cool pair of shoes or an outfit or an item or something, they're going to want to know where you got it from. So by tagging them, they're more likely to come back to your page because they think, oh, this person showed me this cool item and now I know where to get it. So that's a a better strategy instead of just blanket tagging a bunch of accounts hoping that you get a repost. It just doesn't work the same anymore. And that leads me to the third thing I want to talk about, which is the reason why so many of these repost pages aren't growing or seeing the engagement that they used to, and it's that posting a photo a day is no longer necessary. Having a daily photo like photographers used to do, you know, a couple years ago, just doesn't make sense anymore because of how the algorithm works. Everything is based on interest level. It's not necessarily based on just posting a piece of media and having it show up at the top of your feed like it was when Instagram was in chronological order. Now that doesn't mean you want to just disappear from Instagram and not post content every single day. I'm specifically talking about posting photos every single day. What you can do instead is maybe create a schedule for yourself where you post photos twice a week and then the rest of the week you focus on posting one Instagram story or focus on posting you know, an Instagram reel or a video or something like that. And why this is so beneficial to growing your Instagram and your 
your brand is because it gives people more of an insight to who you are as a person and what you're all about and kind of a brand behind your photography. You see, photos and art on Instagram don't perform very well anymore unless you have a real standout image. And I think it's more beneficial to artists and photographers to show more of the behind the scenes and take advantage of other features like stories and reels to do that instead of just constantly posting a photo or a piece of art every single day. It just doesn't seem to work. I don't know the technical reasons why. Just in my experience, a lot of photographers who I know use that strategy, you know, a couple years ago and found a lot of success are not finding the same success now. So that leads me to the fourth thing that I want to talk about, which is a big mistake I see a lot of creators making, and it's posting Instagram story content just for the sake of posting it and trying to be active rather than having it be a piece of media that is relevant to your audience. A lot of times people feel the need to show up on stories every day thinking, if I don't do this, my audience is going to forget about me. But now on Instagram, stories are part of the algorithm as well. Have you ever noticed that when you open up the app, sometimes you see certain creators in the top of your story feed and sometimes you don't see them there. They're way back down on the list. That is because Instagram is deeming their story less interesting to you with their algorithm. So what I recommend is try to show up on stories as much as possible, but make sure that you're posting media that is actually relevant to what you're doing and make sure it's interesting. You don't want to just post a bunch of filler content in your story to try to appear busy. For example, I'm a photographer. I go out and do things. I make photos. I try out gear. I make these YouTube videos and I try to keep my story for the most part around those things. Even when I post my running updates, I like to make sure that the photography is good and it's interesting to my audience. I don't post just like random food boomerangs and stuff like that. It just doesn't make sense and it's not engaging to the people who follow me for a certain thing. So real quick before we continue on with this video, I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Squarespace is a massive part of my internet business and it can be a massive part of yours as well. If you're trying to grow your social media, one way that you can diversify your audience and have them spread out amongst different places is by having a website. And a website also makes you look more official and more professional to people who are finding you. And on top of that, if you're someone who's creating products, like me, a photographer, I have presets, I have my photo books, I have prints. Squarespace and their e-commerce tool make it easy for you to sell these products to the people who are following you on social media. All you gotta do is have a simple call to action on your post saying, hey, link in bio for a print of this photo, or hey, link in bio if you wanna edit like me. It's very simple and very easy, but it's not possible without a website. And Squarespace is hands down the easiest place to build a website for yourself. I have multiple videos on this channel where I break down a variety of sites. I have one where I talk about how to build an e-commerce site. I have one where I talk about how to build more of a portfolio site or a website like mine, evanramp.com. In all these videos, you're gonna see how easy it is to build a website using all of Squarespace's design templates. And also Squarespace makes it easy to manage your websites through their mobile app. I do a lot of order updates, inventory checks, and small changes to my website through their mobile app. And this is a great tool for creators who might not have a team of people behind them. So don't be one of these people who puts all this energy into building a social media following and doesn't have a website. So you can build a trial site at squarespace.com slash Evan Ramp. And when it's time to sign up, you can use code Evan Ramp to save yourself 10% at squarespace.com slash Evan Ramp. Start a free trial and use code Evan Ramp to save 10% at checkout. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. All right, so number five on this list has to do with manipulating your follower count by following and unfollowing other people. This is the most prehistoric, oldest social media strategy in the book that has never worked. But back in the day, it kind of worked a little bit because there was this culture on social media of following back. People would follow you back, even if it was a random person. It was just kind of what people did, especially on Twitter. If you were on Twitter back in like 2012, you know all about that stuff. You know about like Twitter follow trains. It was a crazy place back in those days. But now it doesn't work because one, following back isn't really built into the fabric of social media anymore. And also people have caught on to this game. If someone gets followed by a random person and they follow them back, they know in the back of their mind, hey, I need to look out and see if this person unfollows me because if they unfollow me, I'm going to unfollow them. And the reason this negatively impacts you now is because algorithms take that data of someone unfollowing you and they associate it with your account being uninteresting or your account being something that people don't care about and they're less likely to share what you're creating with other people. So if you get a bunch of people unfollowing you all at one time, 
the algorithm thinks, hey, 100 people don't like this person anymore. Why should we show it to 100 new people? It's a very like you know basic example, but you get what I'm saying. And another strategy I'm seeing people use is they're creating pages with really interesting avatar photos, You know, maybe a bright color or an interesting name, and they're following and unfollowing accounts multiple times throughout the day. I see this on my own page, and I don't understand the strategy because it comes off extremely spammy and just weird. If you're wanting to get the attention of a larger account or an account that inspires you, the best way to do that is to just simply mention them in the comments and say, hey, this photo, this outfit, this thing I'm doing is inspired by so-and-so. And once again, there's no guarantees, but it's way more likely that someone is going to engage with your account and with your content with a simple shout out or a thank you or an inspired by than they would with you spam following and unfollowing them every single day. There's just better ways to go about it than trying to manipulate your follower count by following and unfollowing someone. So let's leave that that in 2012 where it belongs. Next up, number six on this list is a quick one. It's the idea of a perfect feed. Back in the day, 2017, 16, when things were primarily photos, you saw a lot of creators obsessed with making sure their feed had this constant theme, this constant look throughout, and a lot of people were getting more followers because of it. And I even have a video where I talked about it probably in like 2016 or 17, where I was curating my feed by color and it looked great, but now it just doesn't seem like an effective way to use your energy because of all the different types of media that are available for people on Instagram. No one is really checking for an account to look perfect anymore. It's not something that stands out the way it used to. And a prime example of this is go look at someone like Logan Paul. The guy has a massive following still. He's still growing on the platform. And back in the day, his account was very clean, very professional looking and now it's just a little bit all over the place because you can tell he's putting his energy into sharing what he's doing and creating quality media that informs his followers of all the things that he's getting into rather than trying to have this perfectly fabricated and curated feed. I think that's one interesting thing that video has done for Instagram as a platform as it's removed this overproduced, overpersonalized element to the app a little bit. Obviously, that's always gonna be there with social media, but now you're seeing more and more creators show kind of a grittier behind the scenes side to all the polished media that they're putting out. So that's one thing that's cool. I just wouldn't put the time and the energy into having a perfectly curated feed anymore. Obviously, you don't want it to look like trash, but you know, there's a fine line now, I think, with where you put your energy. And the seventh thing actually kind of contradicts that. It's one of these weird nuanced things that happens with social media. Back in the day, there was a lot of creators hyper obsessed with having the perfect feed and then regular folks, you know, someone who just uses Instagram as a casual account, they weren't really concerned with how their feed looked. But now this group of people is a little bit more savvy to how social media works and they are less likely to just repost some random picture of a dress or a swimsuit or a giveaway flyer than they would have been back in 2016. So number seven on this list is if you are using Instagram for business, or promotion, if you're doing giveaways, doing these giveaways where you have someone repost a flyer, it just doesn't work anymore. People are less likely to do it. It's an ineffective strategy. I actually watched this change happen from personal experience. When I was working at Epitome Shoes in Atlanta, I was doing all their social media content and I was creating the flyers for Yeezy giveaways. So what we would do is I would create a flyer and people would have to repost that flyer and tag multiple people. And when we first started doing those, I think it was around 2016, these were really popular. We were getting a ton of reposts. We were getting a lot of followers on that account from it. And towards the end of my time working there, that had really slowed down. The culture of just sharing a giveaway post and archiving it later had kind of gone away. And what I was seeing work better is something like the creator Harrison Neville does where he posts a photo with the shoes he's giving away and he just says, tag people in the comments. You got to be following me. This is still going to get his account engagement. It's still going to be an effective giveaway, but it's a very low list to ask for anyone who is trying to win the shoes he's giving away. It's much more simple and easier, and it's what I recommend if you're someone using Instagram for these types of promotions. Don't make your followers do all this work. All right, so where are we at on this list? I think we're at number eight now, and that is posting in your story that you have a new post. This was something that was really popular when the Instagram algorithm was introduced and Instagram stories were introduced. People were seeing less engagements on their posts, so they would post it in the story to basically inform their followers 
followers that, hey, check it out. I have a new post. Go interact with it. The problem is Instagram stories are controlled by the same algorithm that controls posts for the most part. So I'm speaking from my own experience watching the back end data on my Instagram stories when I post a variety of different content. When I post a high quality photo or a high quality story that's relevant to my brand, it's typically seen by a large amount of people. Those numbers are usually pretty high and there's a lot of engagement on them, a lot of reactions. But when I share my new post in my story with you know the new post caption or a sticker over it, whatever method I try to go with, I typically see those views cut in half. Sometimes they're even cut by more than half. And the reason for that is Instagram knows that this post is less relevant to most of my followers. So when I post it, my little bubble in the stories doesn't show up at the top of their feed like it would if I posted a normal piece of media that people are following me for. It's just an ineffective strategy now. Maybe it will get you an extra 100 likes. Maybe it will get you a few extra comments. By all means, keep doing it if you want to. It just seems like this trend has run its course because of how all the algorithms have changed on Instagram and how stories work now. Number nine on this list is a quick one, but it is stop using these engagement groups. I was in one of these in 2016. Somebody invited me. I didn't really know how it worked. I got out of it pretty quick because I saw all the pitfalls of it, but what people will do is they'll create essentially a group chat or like a group on WhatsApp where everyone says that they're going to post around the same time of day. And when everyone posts, they share the link and everyone in the group goes and interacts with the post. I don't think this is as popular as it used to be, but what would happen back in the day is you'd post a photo, share your link, and you'd immediately get like 25, 40, however many people were in this groups, comments and likes. So it looked like your post was performing really well. The drawback to this is once that group collapses or people stop engaging with the group, your engagement on your post plummet. And also it gives your backend data for the algorithm this skew that is inaccurate. So people are going to be liking your photos and engaging with it maybe from one demographic that doesn't actually match the demographic that you're trying to target towards. And it just becomes this hot mess that is actually not going to help your account grow. I know it's tempting to do this because having more engagement feels good and you might benefit from it in the short term. You might see more people finding your page. You might gain some followers. But in the long term, fabricating all this data and fabricating all this engagement is just going to hurt your account as it starts to dwindle off. So I don't recommend doing this. I'm not exactly sure how many people are still doing it or if it's still popular. I know it was extremely popular back in the day. Given the way Instagram is now, if I got invited to one of these groups or someone DM'd me asking me to participate, I would definitely say no to it.